Before the powerful Allied navies in control of the Mediterranean glittered the prize of the Turkish capital, Constantinople. A good strong thrust to the city, and Germany's newfound Eastern ally could be knocked clean out of the war. It was a calculated risk, well worth the taking. The guns of the French and British navies opened up on the forts of the Dardanelles in an all-out effort to force the passage. But though the enemy was silenced, sinkings through a chance scattering of mines decided the Allies to call off the attempt. The risk then didn't seem so worth it. Vessels of war and vessels of peace. After but a few months of history's greatest struggle, Britain was still a country clinging to peacetime ways. Still the rowing, the racing, the preoccupation with the pleasant but superficial. And though at every turn of the lane you might be confronted with khaki and metal, Britain's was a landscape unblemished by war. But the spirit and will to win were there. One could hear the voices urging greater effort. Strike the enemy now and strike him hard. Muster all our resources and drive the monster back to Berlin. Conscription we will not abide being freedom-loving men, but join up now, for your king and country need you, and we think you ought to go. Sensing this mood even more than the British Prime Minister Asquith, the Minister of Munitions, Lloyd George, kept his finger on the nation's pulse and bided his time before he himself would take over and win the war. Meanwhile, Lord Kitchener set about the task of building up the greatest volunteer army in the nation's history and his famous call to arms drew a noble response. They thronged the recruiting offices, queuing up to enter and marching away when they left. Some were given uniforms, some weren't. Schools were taken over to house them, and as far as the kids were concerned, it was, we don't want to lose you, but we think you ought to go. There's not a reason why, there's but to do. As the sergeant said, you lot have plenty to learn before you're fit to meet the Un. I know we ain't got uniforms for you all yet, but Rome wasn't built in a day, and besides, still being in caps and waistcoats will help you to settle in and feel at home. Nice dry tents, so much healthier than nasty damp brick walls, good nourishing food, and you can always ask for more. Good, you're lucky. But it won't all be play, mark you. Digging is one of the most important tactical tasks of the up-to-date fighting man. You've got to learn to dig holes, trenches, dugouts, mine shafts, and uh, sanitary arrangements. You've got to be ready to dig your way to Berlin if they ask you. And who knows? The way things are going, they probably will. Can you put up one of these new Nissanuts? Well, now's your chance to learn. And think how handy that will be when the war's over. With such inventions, bricks and mortar will be things of the past then. For you old sweats, you've got to realise that this war is different. This war is scientific. That don't mean you've got to throw college diplomas at the enemy. It means you've got to use your head. For instance, after digging, the next most important tactical battle is keeping their dead down. You've got to be able to walk on your belly like it comes natural. It was natural when you was babies, so you shouldn't find it all that hard now. The modern army marches on its stomach, as Wellington said, and don't forget it. Or you won't have an head left to forget it with. Now the offensive side, as you might say. First there's wire. Wire is what you'll be seeing a lot of, mark my words. So wire is what you've got to learn to handle with confidence, as it was your Aunt Fanny's knitting wool. And wire will be something you just ignores. To be even more offensive, grenade throwing. A quick strike on the sleeve, a good high and overarm stroke, that's all there is to it. But in this kind of work, you'll have all the help that science can bring. I tell you, there's no shortage of brains on our side. What Kipling once called the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Then gas. Now, don't lose no sleep over that. 
All you've got to do is smell it, wet your finger for the wind, and slip your mask on your head before it wafts over. Be able to cope with anything, then. Any uh, horse riders here? Oh, well, now's your chance for that, too. Nothing to it, really. Just about to keep it on. Just like a bicycle. Grip with your knees. Easier than falling off a log. Sounds a lot to learn, but after all, you'll be well paid. Just think, when you become a sergeant, you'll draw 19 and 10 pence every week regular. If, as and when, you get to sergeant. Of course, too, there's parades, route marches, kit inspection, polishing, guard duty, fatigues, and the rest of the days you're out. Who knows? You might even be able to get in a spot of fishing. <laughs>